Um, quickly want to touch upon this and just remind this again. So it's been a few weeks since it dropped, and I, was, I know I'm kind of late, but I just wanted to remind people that I still think after listening to it again in full, um, you know, went to the shops quickly to do a bit of a shop run, and I listened to Summer Walker still over it from front to back, and I came away with the conclusion that I think this might be the greatest album or the greatest R&B album to release at least in the last decade or so, especially considering how amazing her debut album was in Over It, all the circumstances around it, you know, the genius level productions from London on the track, and then there, obviously, acrimonious, very public breakup and whatnot. The fact that everyone was kind of writing her off musically, thinking that, you know, with most of the production genius gone, could she deliver? Um, you know, her being a pretty... Um, unlikable character on social media in general she's kind of mellowed out a little bit but she was going for a stage where it seemed like she was purposely trying to piss people off online and it worked for the most part people started to get really turned off by her but again the musical talent is just so great you're willing to put that to one side i know i am at least and there was a lot riding on it there was a real lot of pressure i thought on still over it i think there was a lot of in it and maybe again it's something that I've, i'm sure she's probably spoken about herself in interviews but man did she deliver man really did and i think again R&B is one of those genres where, unfortunately, um, especially if you if you're if you're a fan of an actual R&B artist for real and not just making you know empty ballads and shit, it really does. It really is at its best when the artists themselves are going through really horrible personal times, like when they're going through some fucked up situations. You get some of the best R&B music, hands down. And I think this is a great example of it, man all that trouble she's going through with Lady London the track, all of his baby mothers, the the memes online, the comments on the shade room, all this sort of stuff is just gonna be compounding, compounding. Um remember earlier on there was all that beef about um no earlier on beef. There was that thing where she was having a little bit of an argument with her someone from her label. I think it might be the guy that was on Joe Banner podcast that she wasn't happy about the lead single with JT and all this sort of stuff. And he listened to the late the lead single with JT, I forgot what it was called. Um and it actually flows a lot better on the album than it actually does when you listen to it on its own. It's actually a not that bad of a record. Um, it sounds much better in kind of context to what's going on with the actual whole album. It's um, X for a reason. The one with JT from the City Girls. And you're like, ah. Oh. Do you know what I mean? It completely changes everything. It shifts it. It's just, honestly, it's a sensational album. I'm just thinking now about some of my favourite tracks on there. Um, I'm still blasting X. Uh, sorry, I'm still blasting No Love. I think Scissors Verse is just out of this world on that one. So confusing, but out of this world. Um, I think uh, Reciprocate is really good. Circus is some awesome. constant bullshit. It's great. Unloyal, of course, is awesome. Um, Toxic with Little Dirk is just banging. Little Dirk's verse is just out of there. That right there. I would pay good money to listen to or to watch a show. Um, with um, someone Walker just performing loads of fucking um, fucking covers of you know Neptune beat tracks or whatnot, that would be sick. Or just even an EP from them too. That was a really unexpected collaboration. That was one of my favorite tracks as well. That right there, like it's just old school for real Neptune vibe, man. Just so so groovy. But yeah, the entire album's an absolute banger. And to make matters even more interesting, because of how late and interesting she is as an artist, then this picture goes crazy all over the web, right? her getting a tattoo of her um, new boyfriend, I'm guessing a name on her face and him doing the same thing. And I think people online are like, oh, she's not learning. She went from one toxic thing to another. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, you know what? This is what makes the art great. This is what informs it. Because the lady is clearly a mess and she doesn't try to pretend that she's not. And I think that's what you get in the music. And I think that's why people resonate with her so much, but they don't want to admit it because if you admit she's a mess, you have to admit you're a mess because you listen to it. Do you know what I mean? But I honestly do think this is what makes her music so great. The, her ability to kind of take all this kind of weirdness and put into the album. Because if you listen to the actual album and you actually break down the records or the lyrics, sorry, and then you see the tattoo, it is a bit funny. Do you know what I mean? It, does, it, it, it is a bit <laughs> insane. But also I love it. I just love the whole energy. I love the insanity of it. I love my artists to be a little bit layered, to have actual real lives, to have bits of conflict, to have flaws. Um, and to just, you know, really be experiencing life in real time and kind of showcasing it to us. I think that's what we get from Drake, isn't it? Earlier on. Drake earlier on was really that because it's, it felt like every album was basically his diary, an open diary for him to tell us like what it actually feels like to be the guy that's on top of the world as you're going through this crazy thing that he's going through, right? Amassing wealth, women falling out with people deals all this shit and he did it really really well to a high level sometimes brutally honest right 
um, to the point where people ridiculed him. But that's what basically made him a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And I think the same thing goes for Summer Walker, bruv. I think she says a lot, again, online that people don't like and maybe she doesn't respond well to stuff and hasn't necessarily got the bestest of attitudes. Well, again, I don't know what the great attitudes are meant to even look like when it comes to modern day pop star nowadays, but when it comes to actually the music, the artistry of it all, like it's sensational, man. Let's not cut let's not cut any corners. Let's not let's not let's not be around the bush, man. The late the girls in the league of her own. Really, really in the league of her own. And I think if I remember right, again, I'm not a, a, I'm not that big on the numbers, but I'm pretty sure the album was like high, high numbers, like two hundred thousand something first week. Again, for an R and B recording artist, she doesn't necessarily rap and do turn up music for the most part. It's mostly, you know, painful um R and B songs for women going through it, young women kind of navigating through this thing called life and it's selling all those hundreds uh, of thousands um per week it's just testament to the talent and again i just want to salute that again remind you that it's out there it's obviously old news now because it obviously came out a while ago and you know don't listen to reviews man don't watch reviews will you listen to the album yourself because if that got 6.8 i'd love to know what got a fucking five you know what i mean because for sure i missed out on a couple of gems because it's nowhere near a 6.8 it's definitely up there with an eight for me if, if it was up to me i'll give it a 10 because i think it's fucking flawless but hey what do i know in it what do I know?